Hey everyone, welcome to TBWS Writer's Room, episode number two, our new YouTube series. Uh, basically, this is, you're seeing most of us here, this is the uh, uh, TBWS writing staff. Uh, basically, this is something we wanted to do where we're on YouTube, we're choosing a topic of discussion, and we're all discussing it here. You're seeing our faces looking like the fucking Brady Bunch, which is fine, you know what I mean? This is going to be a lot of fun, actually. At the time of this recording, it's uh, it's March, March 20th, 2020. Uh, obviously, if you're listening now or if you're listening from the future, um, and if you're in the States, obviously, we're dealing with COVID-19 and coronavirus, and everyone's going through different stages of quarantine, industries are getting hurt, all that stuff. We've done watch content around it, but at the same time, Michael and I, who's the muted dot right now, um, we were talking about it, and the whole group was talking about it, and we thought it would be super fun to just... Um, we just do something fun. To, to, a lot of people are kind of down right now, and it'd be really cool to just do something to remember why we all love this hobby. Just do a hardcore, watch-focused topic. Um, and it's a very dividing topic. It's a very polemic topic. So it's at this time now where I'll instruct you to prime and prep your pitchforks, prepare your, your baskets of fetid fruits to hurl like whoever is don't like because this uh, uh, a very special episode number two TBWS writers room we're talking about the ultimate dive watch the uh, impetus here is that we've all chosen our ultimate choice for dive watch the criteria are basically something you could actually dive with so you know uh, it doesn't have to be a modern piece it could be a vintage piece we've all chosen some pieces I think it's gonna be pretty cool the way it's gonna break down um, I chose a piece, we all chose a piece, there's eight of us here, this can be a lot of fun. But first, before we really get into it, we should probably go around the room, do intros, because I don't think many of us have actually, I mean, we've all seen each other, we, we know what each other looks like, but many people at home don't know what we look like, so. Uh, we'll go around the room and do a super, super quick wrist check. Uh, I'll I'll start, and then I'll pass it, I'll pass it to everyone in the room that I talk to. You so, hey, Kaz here from Two Book Watch Snobs, and I'm wearing my, I should probably take it off my wrist, I'm calling from fucking a, like a, cave that is the orient star that uh, do orient star diver that's telling everyone about uh reference rk at zero one zero sixty i'm gonna turn my light on let me know if it gets terrible this might help people at least see the watch Ooh. so yeah that's what i'm wearing uh i'm gonna pass it next for intros i will pass it to jason hey what's up you guys jason trickle here and um, for my wrist check today, I'm wearing the uh, Invicta Pro Diver 1953. Came out pretty recently. It's basically oh, nice. an homage to like the um, Tudor Oyster Submariner. If you look at like the the mm. 7923, it's like a spitting image of it, but it's pretty cool. So cool, so cool. Uh, next up, Greg. Tell everyone a little. Hey, hey, what's going on? Greg Bedrosian here, contributor for Two Broke Watch Knobs. And today, uh, my wrist check. I'm going to uh, pull some heat with a little bit of a flex, and um, I've got a ceramic Submariner date on. Uh, sorry, let the, uh, let the hate flow. If you if you guys heard, heard a distant thud, that was the sound of Greg Bedrosian just tossing his manhood on the table and just kind of saying, what's up? <laughs> Rocking the sub, right? Very, very cool. Uh, next up on the list, uh, Henry. What up, man? Hey, it's uh, Henry Morgan. I'm the, the new guy, newest writer. I am rocking uh, my Seiko 6309 from oh. uh, 83. Solid watch. Properly 83. Wow, that's older than me. How cool is that? I'm in 86. Awesome. Is the birth of Seiko a thing? Oh, I know. Huh? Is the birth, birth of your Seiko? Seiko? Is that a thing? Yeah. Michael, is that a thing? You're muted. I feel like in so much as uh, any birth year watch is. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I got Michael's psychic signal of him telling me, Kaz, you're getting distracted. We have to do a quick wrist check. Like, I heard him. I didn't see him, but I heard him. Uh, so next up, Damon, tell us what's up, man. Hey, guys. Damon here. Uh, this is my Aquastar. Uh, it's Aquastar Sikaton. Kind of early 70s, lesser known brand, but they did almost exclusively uh, uh, diving watches. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. Very, very cool. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Next up on the list... Baird, what up, dude? Hey, what's happening? Uh, Baird, and I am wearing today, or I've got it on my hand, the uh, the Mito Ocean Star Tribute in blue. Nice. 
That thing is so cool. You just put up a. We'll put a link to it in the. We. I mean, me. Like we have a fucking team. Me. I'll put a link up to. It. I mean, we have a team, but not like. Thanks, Kaz. Yeah, no, we have a team, but like you know, like oh, I'll, I'll send it to the interns. Like no, like um, I, I went full lion from from Wizard of Oz for some reason. We have to tore off my arms. Um, I put a link to Baird's to Baird's write up on that watch in the in the YouTube description. Um, really really cool photos in there. Uh, next up, Mike Razak. What up, man? How's it going, guys? Uh, I am rocking. I uh, hope you can see this because I cannot see myself. Uh, but I am rocking the Feynman Cove uh, diver prototype. Um, super cool. Lots of detail. What I'd call a gentleman's diver because it's it's uh, it's not sporty enough to be a real diver. Uh, Interesting. What was that? Very cool. Feynman. F e y n m a n. Cool. 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 Yeah. That's not Feyn- that one. Famous for its sperm it. hand. Is that a real thing? Um, go to the website. You'll see. I'm not, if you're asking me to Google sperm hand, that's, <laughs> listen, guys, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta walk into work and you gotta Google sperm hand. As Nothing soon as you will log happen. In to Microsoft Outlook. Do it with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> Doing your quarterly review. Uh, next up, last but not least, my better half from Broke Watch Snobbery, Michael. Michael Panate. What up? Hi. I have the. Um, should I show it? Uh, I don't know, Michael. What do you think, man? It's <laughs> the it's the base Luminor, the Pam Triple Seven. Is that an Anonymo? Real nice Anonymo there. <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off. <laughs> All lucky seven. So um, that was everyone. Super, super cool. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to, in the same order that everyone introduced themselves in for me, that's the order in which we are going to share our favorite pick or our top pick for, for kind of like an like a ultimate dive watch um i've seen the picks ahead of time we uh there's some that you're probably expecting and there's some that you're probably not expecting that's here as well my cat does uh, watch we just we still love her anyway. um but what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and do like a screen share so everyone at home can at least see the watch that people are talking about and then uh we're going to see what happens from there give me a second here everyone on the podcast always here's my cat here's one of them you can see it that's mm-hmm. yang i love you gotta go I just throw it out the window. Emails. You threw that cat out the window. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try. Um, just to clarify, I know that's not how our listeners sound. Uh, so here, let's do this. Oh, that's right. Jesus, I'm going to go first. I wrote down my name first. Like, who's going first? The cat's going first. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, and my pick for Ultimate Dive Watch, I thought it would be really, really interesting to choose something. I wanted to just something because when I'm thinking dog watch, ultimate dog watch, I'm assuming in this scenario that this individual, he or she probably has a dive computer, maybe something that they can rely on for, uh, you know, extra, like, double, triple, quadruple redundancy, you know, whatever the hell it is. And so I'm like, okay, let me see what makes sense. And then obviously I started gravitating towards G-Shocks and then Frog Bands, but I was looking through Frog Bands and a lot of them didn't seem like a good fit. But then I saw uh, this one that actually seemed pretty interesting in that it fits a really cool mold so let me turn on my screen share for everyone share screen yes sound like Vincent Price yes can everyone see my screen <clears throat> yeah oh, yeah look at that thing sweet this is super cool this is nice. a G-Shock Frogman GWFD 1000 B1 a bit on the pricier side for uh, G-Shock when you Oops, sorry, that cut someone off? Nope, very good. Uh, a bit of a pricey side for the G-Shock. The reason I like this is in terms of, you know, what I... So just to, cl- just to clarify, uh, I am not a diver. I am nowhere anywhere near the spectrum of an athlete. But in my understanding of what divers are, like, I guess doing or whatever, because this is a professional podcast, this watch seems perspective to me in that it has a depth meter. You can actually log. You can actually record and log dive times. It's got a compass. I don't have to fuddle with or fiddle. Fuddle, 1934. I don't have to fiddle with loom or anything like that. You press a button, it immediately illuminates. Uh, atomic time, uh, ISO 200 meters. It has a thermometer. I don't know why you need a thermometer, but apparently you do. So for me, all of these things, I'm like, okay, if for some reason I'm in like some sort of horrible scenario, I'm a dog. 
and my dock computer fails or, or my equipment fails, maybe this watch can help me out in a pinch. Or if you're just a recreational guy and you just you didn't want to wear a dock computer, you wanted to be super cool and just wear just a watch. This could, you know, fit the bill. So um, again, I chose this one specifically because it's one of the few Frogman that I can actually find with an actual depth of meter, which to me seems like it's something uh, perspective. So um, that reference again, uh, it's G G W F D one zero 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 B one, and uh, links to all this stuff will be in the YouTube description as well. Um, what is everyone's thoughts on this? You know, uh, everyone on the call. Well, uh, anyone think this is like super lame? Did anyone else get this on their radar potentially? What are your guys' does, uh, what are your guys' opinions? Does it always sell for a thousand fifty? Have you found it for a different price elsewhere? I've usually seen it around that price because That's I don't it. think they're because like so. This is the G Shock website and it's out of stock. So if you're going to find it, you're going to find it on like third party retailer sites. And I'm guessing it's not like in high production anymore. I think they made it like few years ago so so um if anyone listening in the tbws world out there if you know of, of a more recent g-shock model in the same price range that has all these features that's around this price definitely hit me up i'll update my choice to that because um this one just seems super cool when i saw out of stock i was thinking how many gold g-shocks do you have to buy before you get bumped up to the waiting list to get one <laughs> <laughs> right? you gotta play uh, you gotta play the ad game man you know what I mean? Anybody else? Because I, I think I might have chosen the only digital watch. I'm going to turn my screen share up just so we can see each other's uh, beautiful faces. Did my screen share turn off? Yep. Yeah, cool. yeah it's off. Yeah. Michael, what are you laughing at? Are you laughing at me? No, I'm just amazed at all these faces. I, I didn't all use my, my camera all day. I, I think it's a cool choice. I mean... Um, <clears throat> You know, they say never dive with anything you want to lose, though, or that you're willing to lose. So I guess 1050 is kind of steep. 95% of these watches then wouldn't qualify for that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mine certainly would. Candidly. <laughs> you know? But that's a good, so that's a good point. So the, reason, the other reason why I started looking at digital is because, like, okay, if I'm diving and I lose this thing, maybe I paid, like, 100 or 200 bucks for it. You know, fuck it, that sucks, whatever, I can replace it. But as I started looking into it, I'm like, okay, none of these feel like proper G-Shock dive watches, which is why eventually when I found the G-Shock, that was a dive watch. It had the depth mirror. You could record and log your dives. Uh, it could do, you could, it had a compass. It could release chum. If you're shark spear fishing for some reason, it can't. The last one's not totally, it's totally spear. Um, that's, but, a, uh, that's a new complication. It's a, it's the chum, that's the chum complication. You, you, you press the button and it, it spews uh, a cod head and all the sharks come in and you can just, you can spew. You have to Google cod head now. That'd be good. Yeah, so it's sperm square. hand and color meter. I, mean, I got to write yeah. down what I got to Google. Michael, we used to do that at work. When Michael and I worked together, when our bodies were physically next to each other working in our workstations, we would be like, that's a risky Google. And we had like a running list <laughs> of things we shouldn't Google at work. When Kaz, when Kaz was training me, I had the worst luck with the things that I Googled. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to like, and I didn't know him Innocent. at the time. At Innocently, it's like it's like it's like. Oh, I mean, that's a good question. You know, how do you reach around? Reach around? I was like, no, 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 no. It's like Jesus Christ. <laughs> and I, I, I didn't get his. Work. I didn't get his humor at the time, so I had to be like, hey, man, I didn't mean to like Google that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fire me. Uh, so here, before I pass the mic, um, this is something I wanted to check in on. Did anyone not choose a digital watch for fear of performance underwater? Because that's a thing I've heard before, especially with G-Socks. Yeah, you'll have shock resistance, but dude, the second you press those buttons, water is going to get in there. Damon, you're shaking your head. Yeah, yeah that's a concern. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so I, I am a huge fan of G-Shock. There, I mean, when I, was, when I was doing stuff overseas and certainly in the water, I mean, I always had a G-Shock. Um, I, we, none of us ever took anybody seriously that didn't have a G-Shock that were in the service. Um, but uh, it's like for a watch – uh, that is digital underwater. Um, I, I like to look at some vintage quartz watches yeah. that are also digital, and they're always busted. Really? Uh, yeah, like ones that like maybe from uh, like the, the 80s, granted. I mean, we were talking over 30 years now. But uh, for a watch of that price point, I guess I just got to wonder, is there any sort of servicing requirements for something like that? That's a that good might... fucking question. How do you service a G-Shock? 
Yeah, for a watch that like, in that price range, I would think that maybe like maybe some dudes would need to take some circuit boards apart and just be okay. Yeah, this thing's not going to short. It's good to go. Yeah, okay. that's actually a really good concern. If anyone listening or fucking, I forgot you guys are watching. I shouldn't just pick my nose. If anyone watching at home <laughs> has it, the, you know, has any insight, um, G Shock servicing, or if you've ever had a super like super nice G Shock, what does the what does this like the, the care and maintenance look like for that? Um, yeah, super, super, super solid point, Damon. Um, anyone else have any uh, 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 kind of notes or comments on my pick before we move on to Jason, who's next on my list, or are we good to go? Well, I was going to say just one quick thing about the servicing. I've mm-hmm. been in a, G- a couple of G-Shocks, and if the bu- the buttons are obviously attached to the case, which they have a seal around them, is what keeps the water from getting in. So at minimum – any seal over time, if we're talking 30 or 40 years, would probably have to be replaced if you wanted to guarantee that water's not going to get in it. Well, the thing is also, if I'm diving with this thing, even like uh, even at what, like like 40 or 50 feet, you get pressure as, uh, as a variable. So seal or no seal, depending on the nature of it, if I press a button, like if I press my, to, to like my, my illuminate button underwater, I don't know. I don't know if the ocean pressure is having an effect on you know that seal. So that's a solid point. You know? Summons Poseidon. It's you press the button underwater and Poseidon goes, dude. I was fucking calling my hair. What the hell? Yeah. It's like I can't find True North. <laughs> I can't find my illuminate button. Yeah. <laughs> Just to clarify, I am not a diver. Uh, so let's do this. I'm super excited for this because I love this pick because this is definitely one that I'm sure a lot of people immediately thought of. Jason. I'm passing it to you, man. Uh, tell everyone your pick, and then I'll turn on my screen share, and we can all look at a photo of it, even though we all know this place. <laughs> all right, thanks, guys. Well, I picked the Seiko um, SKX 007, so it's a pretty safe pick. Um, you know, you have everything. You have the history of the watch. I did a, I did some homework. You got a list. Like kind of going oh, through boy. all the cool watches in the Seiko line all the way back. 62 Moss, which was a really bad idea because now I want like six or seven of them. <laughs> and currently, I don't have a Seiko SKX 007. I sold my, I flipped mine. But now I'm like, after doing all this research, I kind of want to get it back. Um, really? It's kind of such a famous watch that I don't even want to really go into the um, too much about it. I mean, you have, it's, you, the requirements were like a watch you could actually dive with. And this is an ISO certified diving watch, and it's affordable, and it's it has the history, has the, the styling evolution over time. Uh, but for, really, for me, I picked it for I have two personal anecdotes I'll share. Um, one is I've only been into watches for maybe like actually I know exactly. I'm really neurotic, so I have a list of every watch I've ever bought. <laughs> Uh, August 2017 is when I got my first mechanical, and that kind of kicked it off. But I was resistant. I'm resistant to like. I'm a contrarian, so I was looking for watches to get, and Seiko SKX is mentioned over and over and over again. And I was like, I don't want that. It's It can't be that good. So I finally broke down after exploring a bunch of other watches and got one. And then I just remember, like, opening it for the first time and trying it on, and I was like, oh, okay. The internet was right about this. You got one. it. it it's yeah. Just, yeah, it's an, uh, it's just an amazing watch. It's an awesome watch. Um, so, And I'm not a diver at all. The closest I've been to diving is I snorkeled with an Orient Ray 2. Which was really cool because as I didn't realize, like suddenly all the reasons you have like a dome crystal and stuff like made sense. When you're under the water, the the dial, the re hot becomes like an infinite regress. So like when you're off to the side, you actually can't see it. And then when you turn, it kind of like folds back into your vision. So when you have the dome, I guess that doesn't happen. Um, so I'm not a diver. So, but I'm really excited about this Seiko SKX. So, and I know my friend's dad is like a really into diving. So we were out for dinner one day and I had my Seiko SKX on and I thought like, oh, it's a great way to bond with him. And I asked him like, oh, you know, when you go on all your dives, like what kind of diving watch do you wear? <laughs> and he just like goes dead silent. And he just looks at me like I'm a total idiot. And he goes, or a diving computer. And I was like, oh. I was like, but you have like a, and then so I just, I read too much shit on the internet, Kaz. That's what happened. Is like everyone's like <laughs> talking about feeling with escape valves and water resistance and no one's actually fucking using these things but i thought so then i heard like oh people got a dive computer on one hand and they have the watch on the other hand so then i pressing more i was like well do you have like a dive watch as a backup in case like the diving computer fails and same like just look at me and he goes 
My backup is my older model. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. That was a total failure. I just. I imagine. I imagine his reaction would be like. I imagine his reaction was probably just like uh, you going to someone, like you going to a store clerk, being like, 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 oh, can I, can I see your abacus? It's like uh, I have a fucking POS system, abacus. You know what I mean? That's fine though, man. I like I like this pick a yeah, lot so because. That, oh, yeah, it's, uh, exactly. Right? No, go ahead. Oh yeah, I, I think there's a lag, but that's all good. I like this pick a lot because this fits the criteria that we were talking about before. Um, yeah, two hundred dollars is a lot of money, but when you start getting into watch, you learn there's not that much money. And if you're diving with this thing, and if like you know, you know, heaven forbid, if something happens. You're only out potentially two hundred ish bucks, although here on Amazon it says three fifty, but that's a whole bunch of that's 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 a money. I don't know, I don't know how this, is from. this is also just in case everyone's looking at my screen right now, that's because this is the only like proper link I can find for the SKX, but you all know what it looks like. So let me turn off my screen share, go back to Skype. All the faces. I like so that I like the pick for that reason. It fits the criteria of like listen, if it gets banged up or fucked up, okay, I'm not out a thousand bucks if I bought Kaz's dumb fucking G Shock. The other thing Truthfully, you could rock the SKX in a dressy situation. I can't wear a G-Shock with a, with a suit. I'm not like an FBI agent. But that's what I can't make. You know what I mean? So um, I think the SKX, it's recommended most often as a good entry watch and a solid dive watch. I mean, for good reason, you know? Whatever everyone no, else is. It's perfect, the uh, two broke watch snobs watch. It's like ideal value for money. Like, oh, yes, yeah. you're getting a lot of that package, so... Absolutely. Yeah, it's awesome. I don't. I mean, I don't dive either, but I wore that on my honeymoon, like snorkeling, same thing. And I was like, oh, you know, a watch that can go under the water and still move oh. when it comes out of the water. This is fantastic. <laughs> it's like one of my I first mean, big watches that I bought. I bought it for my thirtieth birthday, and I was like, all right, it's gonna. And it's been the watch that goes with me on all the you know trips I go on with my wife and everything. But uh, yeah, I've, that's about as close as I've come to diving. Also, and it was great for skimming the water. I guess at about you know half a meter underneath and then coming up for air and then going back to the hotel was great. Oh, so Saturation <laughs> diving. <laughs> yeah. Saturation the the at the hotel. It, it's important to mention that you can make the SKX look like whatever you want. Oh, yeah. You're really buying a case. That's and beyond that, you can do whatever you want with it. And I, I mean, you can. there are people who will even mess with the case if you want. You know what I'm curious about? Um, and if you guys know, definitely chime in. At the same time, if anyone watching at home knows, definitely let us know in the comments. Has anyone actually, either anecdotally or personally, I guess not personally, we're not divers, taken this thing down to clo close to 200, or like, I guess humans have multiplied 200 meters. What's the furthest that SKX has ever gone down? You know what I mean? Like, has anyone, has anyone, has anyone actually properly dodged with one? Do you think we can get James Cameron to, 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 to duct tape one of those things on his next fucking uh, capsule post submarine, whatever the fuck it's called? <laughs> like, he, like he did with that deep sea. Uh, Michael, you know what I'm talking about. The Mariana <laughs> Trench. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm sure somebody dropped one off a fishing boat somewhere and it went down pretty yeah. deep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and on quiet nights, just like it'll be this. auctioned at Christie's. Yeah, right? <laughs> it'll be auctioned at Christie's in the year 3000. Relic from the past. I uh, used to buy these for $200 on the Amazon. It'll be the new mill sub. I'm calling it now. The Seiko SKX will be the new mill sub in a thousand years if we're still on this planet. You know? I can't, Except that I can't wait for the double million orange. Of market. <laughs> wait, wait. I, 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 uh, who was that, Barry? Was that you the first? The first uh, yeah, you, you said it was going to be like the mill sub, except that there's literally 40 million of them out there or more. So <laughs> like, the 40 I, mill sub. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> I, I don't know I don't know if those watches are gonna be very rare. I mean you know, right? People you know. will probably be clamoring over those modded versions with the fishbone hands on them. Those will be the ones people really want to get. No, no, no. People will be fishbone. You'll be looking at two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars for an aligned bezel. <laughs> <laughs> So let's call it now. The aligned bezel is the red text. That's Seiko's yeah. version of Rolex red font. The aligned like, bezel is the Comex. Oh my fucking god! Do you, guys uh, think, do you guys think a uh, a new in box like Seiko SKX 007 or 013 is worth buying right now and just holding on to for like ten years? I mean, to to be yes. Okay, so yeah. okay, I'll, I'll just shut up. Michael just Michael just chimed in. Michael said yes. 
I think it's just it's one of those really fun exercises that you can just take on right now as a watch collector. Why not? I think I think Spencer Klein even mentioned in one of his videos, like, yeah, I have a couple of SKXs that I just keep in the box for fun because they they are essentially the next seven thousand twos, which are uh, becoming increasingly rare in non modded condition. Right. So, I mean, why the hell not? If if you're if you're into Seiko, it's it's just a fun thing to have. I mean, that's a good point. What's the what's the potential what's the potential loss? You spend two hundred bucks to keep just to keep it in the box. Wait. 30 years, uh, that something happens or something doesn't happen. Either way, it's pretty cool. You know what I mean? So, it's a fair point. Uh, but here, let's do this moving the train on. Um, uh, Jason, super cool pick, man, with the SKX. Always classic. I'm really, really happy to see you on the list. Uh, next up, Greg Bedrosian, number three is Greg. Greg, what up, man? What's your, what's going, what's your pick? What, well, I've got, the, uh, I've got the Rolex Submariner for a pick. Um, it's nothing uh, that Video anybody should be, unfa- should be unfamiliar with. Okay. And, Can everyone and, see Greg moving or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just me. Continue. Okay. Um, you know, and it's really iconic. It's an obvious pick, but why is it an obvious pick? And some people might not know that. So I'll just talk about why it's such a big pick. Um, it's one of the original dive watches, you know, from the early 50s. Um, you know, it's really the icon of icons. Um, it defined watch style for over 65 years. There's so many watches that borrow elements from it, look like it, um, that are still uh, sort of in vogue today. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. It's like a Porsche 911, the Ray-Ban Wayfair, or Chuck Taylors. That just, they never go out of style. They're always classic. Um, you know, and then from a price point standpoint, yeah, they're outrageous, but it's sort of like buying a $20 bill, you know. Um, it's They're super liquid, and they hold their value at the same time. If you ever want to flip it, get in some financial trouble, um, maybe – like, oops, I probably shouldn't have bought this. It was irresponsible. You're probably yeah. not really going to get that hurt on it, amazingly enough. Um, the the details and refinement um, are really second to none in the tool dive watch space. Um, you know, they're really not that dissimilar from what they looked like 65 years ago in the grand scheme of things. Um, to people that look at watches all day long, yeah, you can pick out the nuances, but they really, they really, uh, they really have uh, kept true to their form. Um, and if I did dive with one, you know, I'd, I'd probably, I'd trust my life with it, you know, over a, you know, $200 Amazon Seiko, you know, if you were really relying on it and not a dive computer, which you, which you would never do. Um, but you know, you could, uh, I feel like people, I've heard people diving with, with, with Rolex, Rolex subs before. I feel like I have. I, I think that's just for like watch media people that actually dive <laughs> and then they get like paid to dive with it and take a couple pictures, but I don't know. Um, I can tell you the modern uh, six-digit sub bracelet is probably my favorite steel bracelet out there um, at any price point, even for watches that have a higher price point. Um, and here's my my final my final pro, and this okay. is a big one: the Rolex Submariner was so good that they actually made their own homage to the Submariner with the Tudor Submariner. When it started to get a little bit too fancy, they brought it back to a tool watch and made a homage of themselves. I mean, who does that? Oh, that's a good point, right? right? Hey, quick question, Greg. I'm wondering, sure. have you – so you have the ceramic six-digit now. Have you ever owned uh, like a 90s five-digit sub beforehand? No, but I've, I've handled plenty of them, and one of the biggest differences is the bracelet. Like if you go from a six-digit to a five-digit, um, I always make the analogy with – more like vintagey, you know, 20 year old plus Rolexes that the bracelet feels almost like paper clips strung together. Um, you know, Mike, and I know you're familiar with the, uh, you know, the modern six digit Rolex bracelets. Um, can you sort of talk about that? Have you handled any of the, uh, any of the nineties type bracelets? Yeah, it's a completely different game overall and i think rolex had to really catch up to omega i would say mid to late 90s in the bracelet game because omega was ahead if you look at the older 90s seamasters and stuff like that so um yeah handling a six digit milled clasp from rolex is is on a completely different level um you know i had a what was it a 97 no date sub and I bought it watch head only because I, I knew I didn't even care about the bracelet. So I just kept it on a, on a NATO. But yeah, the, um, 
that's that's part of the reason you get one of the modern modern Rolexes. Totally agree. Yeah, for sure. Isn't one of the other differences? Aren't don't the the six digit ones have like the uh, the maxi case where like where the bracelet meets the case? It kind of comes out a little bit more, and the the earlier five digit ones kind of flowed more into the bracelet. That it, that's that's true, and that that is yeah. a thing. And people get bent out of shape. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, yeah. And if you try it on, it's just so comfortable on wrist that's not really a big yeah. deal. One of the other things about the bracelet, um, if uh, I don't know if you guys if you guys can see this or not. Um, I don't have like a good macro on it, but it's got a um, on the fly um, quick, uh, quick adjust. They have some fancy proprietary name for it, but you can click it. I think it's like in, in um, very, you know, very small increments, like smaller than a half link. Um, so you can really get it to, to fit perfectly. Um, glide lock. Glide lock. That's it. Um, but it, 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 it's amazing. And um a lot of people don't realize that the glide lock does not come on all the modern Rolex tool watches. Um, but it, yeah, that, it's, it's, it's really, it's really great. That's I, I've, I, I don't know the nuances between the nineties, the five and six digits, but I have dealt with that glide lock before. And it is, it's real nice. I mean, yeah, here, it's super easy. So good. At, and, and it's not something where you, you cause, because it's under and integrated, it's not something we're ever worried about it shifting. Yeah. So in the '90s, on the '90s five-digit bracelets, they had a like the divers extension, which is that yeah. little piece that sort of folds out. That you know yeah. some Seikos even have it. And um, so that went away. And the glide lock originally was to compensate for that. But what you get is a is this awesome micro adjust. So like if you're like you know you know in water and you cool down, then you go out uh, and it's really sunny out and hot, and your wrist swells. Um, you can almost like adjust on the fly. So it's always perfect. Yeah. Um, there are a couple big, uh, big cons though, to the watch. Um, there's two big cons and, and one is the outrageous price point, um, which I don't even want to say on air because I'll fall over even thinking about it. Say it, say it. Okay. Um, what are the, what I think they up the, up the prices in January. Maybe I think they're like, 80 88 50 maybe usd i did not that's that's not what i paid for mine this was pre everything getting crazy and when i think about what i paid for mine um it is substantially 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 less um so uh it turned out to be a great investment um but it's not really an investment because i'm keeping it so whatever um (laughs) the, the other stereotype um the other thing that comes with it is the bad stereotypes that come with the name you know, with the watch, maybe in a negative way. Um, but to tell you the truth, like most people don't even notice you're wearing it. It sticks with you though. I would say like, there's something, there's something incredible about Rolex, especially in 2020. Um, I personally have never been able to keep any Rolex that I've owned because I feel like there's this sort of weird burden tied into the name as an owner. I, I, I don't, I don't know what it is. But um, I, I totally feel you on that. Interesting. Is it is it a burden or potential negative connotation in regards to, oh, people will see me wearing the watch and they'll only think, oh, he paid X, Y, Z for it. Is it one of those things or is it kind of like you just – you get the watch and then you're like, okay, now what do I do with my life? You know what I mean? Like which is it – or is it some kind of horrible combination of the two? It's a horrible combination. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, a little yes. bit of it's a little bit of both, but you know they're they're great watches. And if we're talking about mass produced dive watches that are, I guess, in the luxury realm, I think it's kind of the best of the best, really. Um, next to something like the newer uh, ceramic Seamasters, you know, I think they're right on par. What's well, is there anything to be said? So I heard this. So so Jason, I'm like you. I haven't been doing watches too too long. It's just been a few years now. Uh, is there any truth to, and I've heard, I've always heard this, uh, you could have bought a stainless steel Rolex in like the eighties for 500 bucks and now it's worth more than 500 bucks. Is that, is, is that like true or that totally just hear that somewhere and it's bullshit? Anyone that knows more than me can chime in, which is every single person on this call except me. My dad claims he bought one in 71 for 325 bucks. <laughs> that, sound, that sounds about right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and Daytona's Daytona's would have been even less because they were not as popular. So you might right, even right, get right. 
You might have even gotten Daytonas for the 200 range. Jesus Christ. Because they just, they just weren't selling. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. liked them back then. Yeah, yeah let wow. me just put it into perspective. Um, when I purchased this watch, I didn't get it from um, an AD. But uh, when I was shopping around looking at ADs, at that point, everything everything you could imagine was still uh, was still in the case. Uh, besides maybe a ceramic Daytona, but I mean the Batman's, the Hulk's, like they were just sitting there in the case. Mm, and to wow. think back, to think like you know now about that, it just seems crazy. But that was that was how quickly things changed. That's heavy, crazy, crazy. So I think the moral of the story is. We should just buy Seiko SKXs and sit on them because you never yeah. fucking know. You don't know how far 200 bucks is going to go, especially with how things are going at Seiko right now. I mean, losing their damn minds charging what they're charging, especially for prospects. But here, I'm, I'm getting distracted. Uh, super cool pick, Greg. Greg, really, 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 really cool. Um, so we've had two iconic dive watches. Uh, we've had the SKX from Jason uh, and then Greg with the coming up the Rolex sub. I'm going to pass it to Henry. Henry. Tell everyone what your pick was while I right, pull it up so, on my screen. So I uh, love dive watches, but uh, I am not a, a sportsman. So I don't really like uh, the beach. I get seasick. So uh, if I'm going to go diving, it's going to be like an event. You know, it's got to, I got to pull out all the stops. So, I mean, I, you know, there's the Rolexes, the Tudors, the Omegas, and they're all great. But I, I really, you know, I trust, uh, trust myself with Seiko. And so in my, uh, my experience of trying to find something that I would take diving on that one time so that I I wouldn't die. Um, the logic was just find the biggest fucking Seiko I could find, uh, and that came down to three that were that were that were basically related. Um, there was the uh, the Seiko uh, what's called the hockey puck. They're basically three of the same watch with different uh, details. The Seiko hockey puck uh, sounded pretty badass. The Seiko Darth tuna sounded pretty badass, and then I saw oh shit, the Emperor tuna. Uh, so all three of these watches, uh, have a thousand meter depth rating, which again, I don't dive. I probably wouldn't go more than, you know, let's say, I don't know, seven, seven and a half, seven, three quarter feet down, but it sounds like that's what I'd want to have if I went diving. Uh, it has a movement that was a stripped down movement. So the 8L35, uh, caliber that was a kind of like, uh, stripped down, roughed up version of the caliber 5s65 grand seiko movement uh and it's got uh it's just like a solid 26 tool movement 50 hour power reserve 28,000 uh bph it just it's it seems like uh you know if i'm going to take a seiko on that one diving trip this is probably it i think also just being completely uh aesthetically driven being a you know a, a dive watch fan who doesn't dive a racing watch fan who doesn't race etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, and not wanting to pick a vintage watch that would just fall apart in the water. Uh, sure. This was this was the the prime choice. And out of the three of them, you know, you go down the line. You have the the all black hockey puck with the black bezel, the black shroud. You have the uh, uh, the Darth Tuno silver bezel and the black shroud. And then you come to this uh, black ceramic shroud with rose gold. It's got a little bit of uh, panache to it. I mean, you know, I, I also wanted to pick something that you just really couldn't wear anywhere, but in the water, it's too ostentatious, too, too gigantic to wear under your cuff to wear to work. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's, it's fancy. Like, if, you know, again, if I'm going diving that one time, it's going to be the highest depth rating. It's going to be Marine master. It's going to have a grand Seiko movement. It's going to be, you know, just completely badass looking. I even love the fact that the uh, 12 o'clock indice looks like a, looks like a spear. The other ones just have regular <laughs> triangles and this thing just looks like a, the spear of uh, Poseidon's trident or something. Right. Uh, so, you know, I, I, to go along with Jason, like, you know, I have an SKX. It's, I have a, an SKX that I, I've actually worn in the water, funny enough. I have a 6309, which is a great watch and I, I wouldn't take it in the water. I wouldn't sneeze on it, you know, or wash my hands with it. Uh, but, uh, as an exercise, you know, and I asked Kaz, I said, you know, how, how far outside the box could I go? Could I pick something maybe vintage? Because, I, you know, I have a bunch of vintage skin divers. I have a, a Titus uh, a Clipsomatic uh, skin diver watch, and they're all great, but, you know, they're, they're show only. Uh, they're, they're all flash, no cash. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick to this modern thing. I'm going to find something that is bulletproof. I was even thinking, like, maybe, like, the... Um, the Solar Arnie or one of the, you know, the reissue of the, the Seiko H558. But uh, I wanted something automatic. I wanted something uh, totally badass. I wanted something with a shroud. And uh, I wanted something that, uh, I don't know. I just I looked at this and I said, yes, everything about it. The look, the name, Emperor Tuna. This is the one I'm taking with me on my one dive trip. 
I love how diving or anything physical for you, it's like an event you have to prepare for. You got to light Absolutely. candles. You got to shave your back. You got to go through the whole. Pro- I got to get ready, man. Okay. Oh yeah. This cool. is a whole Pull thing. out all the stuff. Pull out all the stuff. I, I didn't realize the the sh- the shroud, this kind of this this kind of enclosure around the actual piece for people who aren't familiar, you know, with the tunas. That's one of the iconic things in this model in particular. I didn't realize it was ceramic. Yeah, it's black ceramic, which is also uh, pretty pretty awesome and unique. That and the movement are probably where the price is coming from. It's pretty pricey. I, I hear I'm on Namon or however. But I never I never never know how to say this point the website's name, but it's approximately here. It's uh, twenty six hundred USD. I mean that that's a lot of donuts, but at the same time, it is it is pretty fucking cool. If you were yeah, uh, my audio cut out. I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't I can't oh, hear yeah. you. Oh, you can't hear me. Can anyone else hear me? Yep. Everyone can hear me. Henry, can you hear me? My yeah, uh, my headphones got cut off. But I will just say yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was that the uh, uh, the other uh, Darth Tuna watch. There was a, a quartz variation that was quite a bit cheaper, maybe a thousand dollars cheaper. Uh, okay. But I think you're right. The movement is largely what's uh, you know going to that. Good stuff. Okay, uh, can you hear us now, Henry? You cannot. It's a hard no. That's a hard no. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to use sign language. I'm gonna point. Nothing. He's just giving me a furred brow. I, I, we're just gonna continue. <laughs> I love Michael. Michael's enjoying enjoying his neighbor's house burning down. <laughs> it's like this is a goddamn professional show. Uh, until we can get Henry back, whenever he comes back. Light a candle for Henry. Great band name. Someone put that on the on the, on the band name slide. <laughs> light a light a candle for Henry. Uh, uh, has anyone ever seen, handled one of these Emperor tunas before? I have. I have not. Michael, I did. You? I did in in New York City um, at the it, Seiko Boutique. Not not the newest not the newest ones, but the Emperor tuna that was out at that time. And it's kind of it's a little bananas. Um, like you should really only put that uh, on like the arm of a robot. That's <laughs> going to the deep um but yeah they're, they're great dive watches um, super super cool yeah. do you know michael off the top of your head any tuna options for someone that didn't want to spend three thousand bucks i'm not super okay michael's giving me the signal to this is a professional show michael's giving me the signal to hold on oh my god i, I remember yes i know what he's doing we're on the same uh a little more a little, a little more there little, it is a little, little solar solar tuna they got this. these out maybe like they a couple. made uh hold on they made a cool um limited edition for one of their anniversaries that they felt they needed to commemorate <laughs> for some reason yeah <laughs> nutters it's hot. so just to confirm it looks like we've lost, we've lost jason and henry dropping like flies it's all right um, let me see if I can pull it out. Uh, yeah, here. Do a little screen share, screen share. Are you grabbing the screen? What's happening? Yeah, that trying. Is so soothing. Sure. Let's all thank. Let's all thank Mike Rezac for getting dressed up for this as well. By the way, only man yeah. in a sports coat. You guys see my screen? Uh, I can, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, look at that thing. It's shazzy. Um, yeah. It's all, I can get uh, behind that. That's not the actual price. That's a shop price. It's a typo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not a typo, but it's not. It certainly didn't retail for that much. Yeah. That's cool. That's uh, so. They, uh, so right now we're looking at the Seiko Pro Specs Limited Edition SB. Uh, I lost it. SBDN026, and I'm actually looking. There's another one. I guess that is around. I I doubt it actually retailed for that, but since it's limited edition, probably no longer available. I, it's that's where we are with it. That's cool. Super super cool. Uh, I'm just gonna do one more check here. Henry, are you with us? Sorry, we can we can move on to let's let's, let's move on here. So, uh, super cool. Pick the Seiko Emperor Tuna. I wrote it down here, SBDX014. Next up, um, we are going a little over time, so sorry guys for that. Uh, Damon, tell us what your pick was, man. I don't think I got a link from you, did I? 
Yeah. Yes, in your way. Can you hear me? Uh, I can hear. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Yep. So let me yep. get ready to pull that up. Tell everyone what you chose for your ultimate so, dive launch. So I chose the Sin Easy M1. And I was actually so certain that somebody else was going to do this one that I had a second and third backup. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, this thing, it really is a contemporary classic among the, those who are, are familiar with Sin or any, any uh, tool watches. Um, it's it's kind of nervous to feel... It's, it's weird to think about a watch. We're almost nervous to describe it because you can't do it justice. That's how impressive it is. Uh, this thing came out. Um, there's really three things that make it unique. Uh, it's, it's tech, it's, it's movement, and then also it's, it's blunt aesthetics. It's, a, it's like a tactical watch in almost mm. every sense. Um, but this thing, it's, it's made out of titanium. It's, it's a chronograph. But not a typical chronograph. It uses a modified Lemania 5100 movement. And to those that are familiar with it, it's, it's pretty cool because the, the, it has a center second. So essentially you only have two hands that are engaged when it's just running traditionally. You have the hour and you have the minute. Um, but it actually has four hands in the center. And so when you start, when you initiate the chronograph, that's when you actually see um this little second hand go around it's kind of shaped like a, a concord jet yeah and I'm just uh, fighting to find a good photo that's the same one all right here we are yep yeah and there's there's really nothing superfluous about this watch whatsoever um they're very conscious about the fact that they want to make uh the sin logo and that little element um down at the bottom which is ar for argon red as well as the date because they didn't want it to detract from the dial at all if you were going mm. to go underwater. Um, and then, I mean, it, we, when we think about Sin, we think about the quintessential two watches, right? The ones that are super over-engineered. Um, I almost have to believe that a lot of that reputation was born out of this particular watch because of how much tech they built into it. Uh, sort of circling back to the argon gas. I mean, they what they did is they inject all this gas in there, and it's meant to... Um, ensure that less oxygen gets inside. Uh, and so this is purportedly something that would make it highly resistant to different temperatures. Oh. Um, so it goes down to, I believe, 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 170 degrees. I'm sorry, negative 50 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Jesus. And it forces the oxygen out of the case so it keeps the inside dry and it's exceptionally resistant to fogging. Um, in addition to that, there's a little copper sulfite tablet uh, de dehumidifier capsule. It's sort of built into the side where you typically have the, the helium escape valve. And that acts as a moisture indicator. So it would turn blue over time. And I guess that's supposed to indicate to the owner when it would be a time for service. Um, and then, I mean, you know, even even the uh, the crown and the, the pushers are located on the left side. So they don't um, get in the way of any sort of bending of the wrist. Yeah. So I I mean, you could you could really go on about this watch, uh, and actually, the whole EZM series is is in a pretty. It's a pretty incredible. And they got one that's called the Hydra series, which is all coarse, and they just inject everything with oil. Um, you could talk about that one forever too. But yeah, I mean, all in all, it's it's a really really impressive watch. I wish they made a, a lot more of them. I think they were about twenty five hundred when they first uh, came out some time uh, ago. Um, this thing is super over engineered. Yeah, twenty five hundred yeah, I mean, bucks. Yeah. That's really and not now, that bad for that, you know, what you're getting. Yeah. That's actually amazing exactly. for what you're getting. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I think, God, you'd be lucky to find one for less than five now these days. Yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it's 40 across the case. They, they re-released one wow. like it called the EZM 1.1, but that was 43, which was a little bit controversial to folks. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible piece of engineering for a watch. This thing is cool. So I didn't you, realize... That so it's it's the central chronograph. It's kind of like that, like that Damasco. You guys know what I'm talking about. This Damasco central second chronograph. This is similar mm. to that. Zen and Damasco have that a lot of overlap, just in yeah. general style. Yeah. yeah, style. They're just. It's. I mean, it's German tool watches. That's yeah. what they do. Yeah, yeah. True. Um, I think Damasco in general is doesn't get as technical and as tooly. As Zinn does, I think Zinn kind of blows them out of the water, in my opinion. But I know there are people who like Damasco better, but I don't understand them. AR dehumidifying technology. Air dehumidifying technology. I'm not reading all of that. That's insanity. 
Uh, but it's all here for anyone that does want to read it. Wow, good, 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 good pick. You know, it's one of those things where in the times here, I'll turn off my screen share so we can all see my dumb, my dumb fucking face. Um, bam, I'm back. I think it's one of those things where the times I have spoken to people who dive and they listen to the show. And I'm talking. And I made this joke before. I can count all of you on one hand. Uh, and so if you're mad, don't worry. You're one of the people on my hand. That trick didn't work last time. It's not going to work this time either. Um, the times that I've spoken with people who dive and listen to this show, they've always said that the over-engineering of something is so they know they can rely on it. Yeah, I'm never diving to 200 meters, but I want my watch ready for 200 meters, so I'll know, I never know I'll hit the max capacity of what my watch can do. Having something like that Zen EZM over-engineered to the point where it can withstand the capabilities and the temperature degrees of human flesh, I mean, like, okay, like, if it... That's something you can probably realistically rely on. So, um, I've never seen one of these in person. Damon, have you ever seen one of these in person? No, no. I, I was lucky enough to see one of the uh, the hydro ones. Um, yeah. There's a guy in our area. His name is Ethan. He he has it, and it's. I mean, these things are just totally bonkers to see. Uh, I think they made about oh 3,500 of these initially. I don't know why they didn't make more. They're incredible watches. Probably hard to make. I mean, just considering yeah. what's, going, what's going in there. Um, who was who was that wind up when we all met up? That that wasn't Zin. That was that was Damasco. Here you go. Yeah, you talk you talk about overlap, Mike Reza. Yeah, yeah. Warren um, and Wan, they really like their Damasco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those, those Damasco were fun. It would be it was cool to yeah. get to handle those in person. I would love to try and get to handle some of these Zins uh, uh, in person as well, especially some of like the niche stuff, the stuff that we don't normally see, which is like one of one of these, uh, you know, the, this easy I mean, piece that you chose. Their one hundred four diver is super clean and has that reverse. It's a countdown bezel instead of a yeah. uh, whatever a normal diving bezel. Um, I've always loved that watch, but unfortunately, never gotten to try one on. Just like it in pictures. <laughs> I think they like. I, I think I've heard that the company that sells all of the German watches in the U.S. Watchbuys dot com does yeah. these like road shows, these trunk shows sometimes, where they have like Zinn and Fortis and uh, oh wow, Nomos They're, and stuff like that. It's a really cool they show. Can... They came and went up in, in one in the uh, Willard, is some fancy ass hotel in D.C. and uh, mm-hmm. I got to go to that. There were quite quite some impressive watches there. Hearing someone sarcastically say "fancy ass" on the show while being the only person wearing a suit is really fantastic <laughs> to me. Some fancy ass hotel. Faces this tie. No wearing a tie. Thank you for not wearing a tie. Um, I just feel underdressed. So just so just before, so super super cool pick in the Zen. Before I move on, did anyone see me have to run and get my laptop charger, or was the screen share up at that point? No, I didn't see you. Thank God, because my ass, because I'm wearing pajamas, my ass anything. was hanging out, okay. and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> now all my friends and family are gonna see my stupid ass on on the, on the internet for all the wrong reasons, you know? <laughs> the right reasons. Uh, super cool pick. We are getting close to an hour here. Moving on. Super sorry, I'm just going a little over time, but whatever. This TVWS. Uh, next up, Baird. What up, man? All right. What's happening? I'll try to be quick because I know I'm long winded. Um, <sighs> But uh, I kind of building off what Greg said, um, because it, to me, in my opinion, the Rolex Submariner is a choice, uh, the most copied, the uh, you know one of the originals, uh, synonymous with diving. But mm. in my opinion, I wanted to look for something that kind of went back to Rolex's more tool days before they sort of went up level, um, and you naturally get drawn, I think, to a Tudor. Um, which I like a Tudor Black Bay, like a standard Tudor Black Bay, but to me, it's it's there's something about it that's not quite as appealing as, say, a Rolex. And I like stuff from that era, like the 60s and 70s. I like cars the same way, too, that were kind of quirky, and people were just like, eh, we've got that body, throw that engine in it, great, you know. Um, or had like a, you know, like a Porsche has a key on the left-hand side, stuff like that. So I actually picked after kind of thinking about it, if I was going to dive and I was going to pick a dive watch that was more of a tool, but still something along the lines I wanted, believe it or not, you're going to get a lot of hate mail for this. I can already hear it coming. (laughs) I picked, (laughs) and I picked the Tudor P01, which everybody on the internet hated when it came out and i think it was just because <laughs> it they is. didn't get the tudor submariner like they wanted 
<laughs> and sure, I get it. I get that this, you know, I, I, I swear, I think everybody just wanted to tutor some Mariners so they could go, look, I got one too. But I, I, literally, I literally think when I look at this watch, it, it marks all these check boxes for me. It, it is a little quirky. I know that bezel lock system is a novelty. Nobody's ever going to use that as, you know, technology's come beyond that. But to me, it is, that is a tool watch to me yeah. when I look at it. It looks like a 1960s or 70s tool watch. It's got quirky bullshit on it. It's not polished. Um, 200 meters, which is average for that time. Uh, I know the modern one has that leather rubber strap on it, which they say uh, will dive. So, you know, to me, I would probably pick that watch. It's four grand. That's kind of stupid, but uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know how they thought they were ever going to sell this thing, but I actually think, and maybe they don't want to, but I actually think that it's kind of a cool watch. You know, I like stuff like that. I like Sobs nine hundred. Had the engine in them backwards, you know, um, and that's the kind of stuff I like, and that's what I liked about this one. I would probably pick that watch. Maybe not new. Four grand is a little much. Uh, but it is, you know, look at it. It's there's nothing, there's nothing polished about it at all. That's, you know, that's your beater, right now, there. Bear, do you know if hey Kaz, scroll back to the uh, where the thank you right there. Bear, do you know if that if if I swap out straps, does that uh, bezel lock system also come out? Interestingly, it's, enough, it's proprietary. Yeah, funny enough, I thought the same thing, and I could not find any instance of anybody swapping that bracelet. And I didn't know if you could buy it and somehow get that leather out of there, but uh, apparently it's a leather rubber hybrid strap. Uh, it is supposed to be able to go into water, but I saw myself wearing this watch not only into the three-foot baby pool at my mom's house, but also like if I was to go hiking or get caught in the rain or anything. This is a cool kind of watch for kind of stuff like that. I think yeah. it's just my opinion, but I literally think people kind of just gave this watch a bad rap when it came out. I but, don't think it's going to, it's, it's go, yeah. go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, uh, my wondering is if, if I, can I take that whole bezel lock system out? I'm looking at what I look like drilled lugs, but that may not be drilled lugs. Is that, I mean, if if I swap the bracelet, as it were, am I swapping that entire system, or does that stay put and I swap it down where the actual leather hit? hit? I, and the thing about it is, is unfortunately, I could not find any information about that or anybody yeah. that's done. Okay. So I don't know. Um, I looked for this all week trying to figure that question out, but yeah. I think you would probably end up just having to live with it because if you ended up taking that lock system out, the bezel's just going to turn indefinitely. Um, yeah. Because that's literally what, what snaps down into those grooves and holds it. There's know, not stops even friction, moving. okay? Right. Oh, there's no, right. So there's this... nothing in it that's gonna. There's not like a modern click that's or, yeah. or, or you know that's gonna stop it. That that ring system. That's what locks it in place. Okay. So once you snap that, and it only is at the top. It's not at the bottom. But if you snap, once you snap that thing in place, that bezel is locked. It's yeah. not moving. That's, that's hilarious because like. I just yeah. I just bought a uh, I just bought a vintage uh, Caravelli Devil Diver six six six, and uh, I bought this really cheap fucking oyster bracelet that I I just posted on Instagram. I just I just squeezed that fucking thing on there just to fit it. I just shoehorned the fuck out of it, and now my bezel won't turn. So it's kind of like I have a bezel lock that I didn't want on there, and so now I'm gonna wear it until uh, I'm gonna wear it for a couple months and, until I feel like taking that thing off and wrestling with it again. But. Uh. So I, a couple things pop pop into my head. So I, I I remember when this watch came out and Barrett brought up a good point. A lot of the initial ire is probably because people were expecting a sub. I remember I, I was trying to get Tudor back in the cultural teased moment. It like that. I yeah. think Tudor teased it like it was going to be a sub, and people people thought, oh my god, I'm going to get a sub too. You know, I now can <laughs> afford one. And then when it didn't come out to be a sub, they were like, that watch sucks. It's yeah, you know. And sure enough, it's a gimmick. There's no doubt. It's there's absolutely no doubt that watch is a gimmick. 
But they were like, here, here's the thing. I like stuff that's quirky. I like stuff that's different and, and stuff that from, you know, a time when people didn't have the technology they do now. And they were like, well, yeah. how do we do this? You know. Greg, I think, I think this watch, should have, this watch let's, should have remained a prototype. I'm, yeah. I, that's what I said initially, and I still stand by it. However, I've got to take my hat off to Tudor because, you know, their little catchphrase is born to dare. And they actually did huh. something sort of wild. You know, instead of just played it safe with a sub. I yeah, still hate the watch. I still hate the watch, but good for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna say the reason I didn't like it was because it was ugly. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> I, I just. But I mean, it, it, uh, looking at it, like the the bezel lock mechanism is a. It, it's neat. Like it's, you know, it's not modern, but it is cool. Um, yeah, in that I kind understand. of. And like you said, Tudor. I mean, Tudor didn't just do a sub they did they did they something did, new yeah they did uh -huh. something it's like i said you know like i said again i like old quirky cars i you know if you don't know what a saab 900 is google it everybody will tell you that's the ugliest car they've ever seen i think that's the coolest car in the whole world <laughs> and and you know this is the kind of stuff that i like i like that old like how do we do it with what we have kind of quirkiness that used to exist now yeah. everything is pretty much we, somebody figured it out and so the next person copies it and they all kind of become the same and there's nothing interesting anymore and i get that there's nothing wrong with that but at the same time like i miss things like this from old watches even though it's i i'm not stupid i know it's a quirk nobody's ever going to need it or use it but i think it's kind of cool and if i was going to buy a tool watch that i might dive with and spend some money because it is four thousand dollars that might be it four thousand is a lot of dollars um i think what's interesting and what what i want to clarify for folks at home who might be in the sort of same situation as me when i'm looking at this watch can you not turn the bezel if it's on your wrist do you have to take the watch off your wrist to unengage the lock yes. If that lock is engaged, you cannot turn the bezel. But can it's, I? There has to be a way, right? There, I mean, I think you can maybe. I think you can click it on your wrist, like you press. You press. From what I can tell, you press. You can press down on that. Uh, oh, on that you piece press and it'll one flip finger up. and rotate. Yeah, right. And then you can rotate it. But once you snap it down, it's locked. It. Doesn't the totally... uh, Emma? Don't old, some old Yemas and maybe the reissues have a they, locking screw down? Uh, yes, mechanism? they have yeah. the, the, the Yema Superman, and you can see it on even some of them that they still make, and I think it's the Heritage. They have a locking system that's built next to the crown so that yeah. when, you, uh, when you screw the crown in, it, it engages and, and locks that bezel yeah. into place. Mm. Interesting. I would 100% drown trying to figure out how to use this bezel. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like it's just it's just it's crazy to me. I I, I guess yeah. And, that's a good that's a good pick. <laughs> and, it. and it has a and it, if you notice it has a you know it you can use it as a dive bezel, but it also has the hours on it. So I guess you could kind of use it as like you know a a cheap off brand GMT or something. Hey, before if you know we move before we move on, has anyone ever seen one of these things in the wild? No, <laughs> I don't think anyone bought them. Yeah. They buried them in a landfill with all the old DT games. Remember all the old DT games? They're sitting in a landfill somewhere. If anybody yeah. wants to send me one, I'll gladly take it and take a look at it. <laughs> Baird, <laughs> like Baird, will, Baird, will, Baird will born to be dare, and he'll take that shit in the kiddie pool next time he's over at his boss. That is correct. <laughs> send, it to, send it to Baird. Uh, here we go. Two more picks. Thanks, everyone, for sticking with us this far. Uh, we got both the mics up. So here, hey, second hey. to last, Mike, Mike Razak. What'd you, what'd you choose, man? All right. Uh, I went with a monster that I love just because it's beautiful. I've got a series of... I'm going to do some screen sharing again, save you the okay. trouble. Um, <laughs> so this is the Seiko SUN065 Patty Edition, but I'll also show a picture of what I call the Miami King version. Um, so this is, uh, just specs-wise, uh, it is 47.5 across. It is a full-on monster. Uh, it wears like a 47 and a half millimeter watch, um, unapologetically. Are you guys good with my screen here? Yeah, I see it now. Oh, I've seen this watch. Cool. Yeah, it is super duper cool. Um, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, they took the tuna and they said, let's make that a little more aerodynamic because they were oh, probably yeah. practicing throwing it at people or something. <laughs> 
Um, you know, you've got uh, a 24-hour hand that can also be used as a dual time. Bezel, you've got Luma Bright. Uh, let me roll over here. You can see there's a, just a huge amount of depth on the dial. Like the these the indices wow. themselves are like a millimeter or two deep. Um, the case side is, oh, wow. you know, it's got kind of Vermont, those lines there, super cool. Um, the two o'clock pusher here is actually, uh, well, it's kinetic. So I, I part of me wanted to go with something that wasn't automatic, mm. wasn't mechanical, um, just for fear of if I'm, you know, during my monthly saturation dives, which this couldn't handle because it's only 200 meters. But, you know, in a dream world, uh, you know, I, I was just like, well, I, I don't want something down there that may, you know, I don't know the power reserve on and I may get down there and it may just stop working and then I die. Um, so I wanted something kinetic. Six month power reserve, super accurate. Case wow. back is cool. I just like it because it's a beautiful watch, to be honest. It's very aesthetically pleasing. It's just a good looking watch. And it's how, got. How a, thick is it? Uh, an inch? I don't know. Uh, um, uh, fourteen point one. So I mean, it is thin. it is a big watch, um, because of like most Seikos, it wears a little bit thinner, or not, or, or just not. It wears big, but it's not upsetting. Um, yeah, it's got the Prospex rubber, which is great. Um, I want to show you. This is the what I call the Miami King version. Ooh. Yeah, uh, that was a fiftieth anniversary because again, anniversaries. Um, so it's got gold accents, all white otherwise, which is a lot, but I've always loved. Um, so that's my pick. I can see a stormtrooper wearing that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Or like, I mean, cool. even, even like Darth Vader, like kind of to throw people <laughs> For some off. some contrast. <laughs> yeah. At, at a, at a funeral, he, he actually wears white, like Derek <laughs> Zoolander. <laughs> That's funny. Cool stuff. In terms of a price point, what's what's appropriate for something like this? I I uh, I looked a little bit. Um, they're at. Uh, I'm going to take a screenshot. They're at like three sixty, three seventy. They're not crazy. Not bad. The no. the the white one is a limited edition. That's up closer. I think in the uh, you know twice that, if not more. Just because there aren't, you know, it's a limited edition of like three thousand, so you can get it, but people are going to charge for it. Yeah, yeah, super, super cool. Has any? I've never handled one of those in person. Has anyone ever handled one of those in person before? I, I mean, I've had it on the wrist. Uh, the shop I help out at has the white one. Um, wow. It, I mean, like I said, it actually wears pretty nicely considering the size, but it's, you know, it's a weapon, so. <sighs> Super cool, super super cool pick. Before I move to Michael to close us out, anyone have any closing uh, uh, thoughts just on on Mike Razak's pick? Sorry for going over the time again. Mike, guys. Mike, I know I said an hour. Mike, does that uh, does that watch have that awesome modern Seiko silicone strap fan strap on there? It's the newer strap, yeah. Yeah, those are besides the lint magnet. Those are fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, if you're gonna take nice pictures with that strap on. I mean, you're going to spend an hour and a half getting everything off, but <laughs> other than that, it, it's those are real nice rubber straps. Especially, I think I don't know how nice they are standalone, but when you're comparing them to the old SKX straps, it's which is arguably the worst strap ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Who here has ever gone full beautiful mind John Nash with the erase tool just taking the dots of dust off like a rubber oh. strap for like for easily a quarter of their working day. Yeah, Michael's yeah. got his hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I want my life I want my life back. <laughs> <laughs> we've all we've all played that game. If anyone at home's ever wondering why, how come Kaz never post boxes with rubber straps? That's that's basically the fucking reason why. I don't have fourteen hours and a staff to dedicate to removing the little fucking white dots. Uh Joe Kirk from Seiko told me the funniest thing when I first started getting into watches, he's like, everything's covered in dust. And you'll never get rid of all of it. I'm like, wow, that's some fucking words of wisdom there, Joker. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, Joe, whatever, I got it. And I learned. He's Joe Kirk was right. So if you're if you're out there, Joe, you were right. Um, moving on to my better half and broke watch novelty. We've made it to the end. Michael, are you eating crackers? What are you eating? What are you doing? I'm are not you eating, eating on our show. No, I'm fine. 
I don't. Okay. I don't I think... usually. I don't usually eat on. Oh, uh, like, oh, I'm back. I think I, I, I think I'm back. Okay, yeah, we see. Did everybody uh, glitch out? Everyone might have glitched out there. We're having some technical difficulties. Can everyone hear? I can't hear see else? you. I can hear you, Michael, but can't see well, you. I can see whole, you, Michael. There you go. There you go. Everybody's the whole back. telecommunications infrastructure is about to collapse right now, so right. that's totally cool. That's totally um, <laughs> we we should be expecting these these types of interruptions. So. Here. Michael, bring us home. What is your pick for the ultimate the ultimate dive watch? Bring us home. Yeah. Surprise everyone. Well, it, it's not a surprise. I, I've <laughs> talked about this watch. I've talked about this watch a lot, and I think it kind of it goes hand in hand with something like a Rolex Submariner, and it's the Doxa Sub three hundred. So the non T Doxa Sub three hundred, whether you have an original or if you have one of the reissues, um, whether it's the Aqualung edition or the non-Aqualung edition, Sea Rambler, or Shark Hunter, it doesn't matter. I think the Sub 300 platform from Doxa is probably the ultimate dive watch. Um, it was produced in collaboration with Claude Wesley, one of the divers on Jacques Cousteau's um, team. So, sorry if you hear my wife. Um, is that your wife singing, <laughs> or am I having a heart attack? She's she's singing. She's just okay. Hey, because. <laughs> Mom, Mom, the meatloaf. meatloaf I was just gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean, oh, if, oh. if you consider if you consider Jacques Cousteau and his team uh, in the areas of ocean conservation, cinematography, uh, filmmaking, you know, he kind of he pioneered the idea of bringing recreational diving to the masses. Um, so Claude Wesley again on his team served direct directly with Doxa to produce the sub 300 and um, you know Jacques Cousteau liked it so much that he made it commercially available uh, via his company US Divers Co and that's why you have the the model that you have pulled up right now is is co-branded with um, US Divers Company okay. that big yellow oh, yeah. tennis that you have right balls. There. yep <laughs> So I, you know, I, I, it's, it's, uh, this case is about forty-two millimeters, but it wears like a, it wears like a solid forty. Like you feel like you have a, a '90s sub on your wrist, uh, and just the best part of these modern reissues is that they actually, they actually reinforced the beads of rice bracelet, and it just, it just feels really solid on the wrist. I, I've never taken it off the bracelet. Um, I don't think I ever will. And if you consider if you consider how much went into making a dive watch for the masses, nothing really nothing really beats the the Doxa. Um, it's just that they didn't they didn't have the Rolex marketing. Mm. They didn't have they didn't have that power to kind of keep up with everything. So that's mm. that's kind of why they disappeared. But that's almost charming. Um, I think. I almost feel like a perfect two watch collection is a Doxa for for everything, and then a Rolex if you want to dress up. <laughs> that's funny. We, Mike, we know. So, oops, sorry, I cut one off. No, go ahead. I've worn this watch before, Michael. When you and I hung out, I've, I, I think what people don't really realize, and I think the reason why it might wear smaller than forty two, that what dial is super small, and but in like in a good way. You know what I mean? Like like the yeah. the. the if you really focus on the watch, the majority of the outer diameter of the watch, it's mainly just metal. On, whereas in other watches, the majority of your forward-facing kind of like circumference, it's watch dial. In this case, we're mainly just seeing you know watch with like a little, a little, a little crystal, a little dial. It, 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 I'm saying this all like like lovingly. Like I think that's what contributes to the really good wearing experience of the watch. Yeah, there, this is the only watch that we've called out uh, during this episode that actually has the no deco scale. On, on the watch at some point. So the outer bezel is the decompression limits and the inner is for elapsed time. Do those, I mean, how, function, how do those cool rotate that? independently? No, they all rotate together. Yeah, okay. so they don't, they don't rotate independently. Okay. Are they supposed to? Like if I relied on that to save my life to not get the bends... That, I, have that no, I, I have no clue how to use the decompression scale. Michael, Doesesn't your professional the experience... Cone a... you have that? Sorry? What's that? Does the Eterna Contiki have the no no deco uh, scale? Is that what that is? 
They have some super weird scale on that watch. I think I think that might be. I mean the super Kontiki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. They're different. <laughs> I have no idea what watch you guys are talking about. Uh, let's take a look. I think so. Do you want the screen, Michael? No, no, that that's fine. I have another computer thing. Uh, yeah, I believe you. <laughs> Super. Cool. So this is my pick, and they're also incredibly fun to collect. Uh, unfortunately, they've become very popular. Um, so they're getting very expensive. Especially if you look for old co-branded uh, originals from the 1960s. So this this one specifically was made only in 1967. Um, any sub 300 non-T model, whether it's the orange dial, the white dial, or the black dial, that was all only 1967. Uh, the originals uh, for the professional orange dial, I think there should be about uh, just a hair over 10 of them in existence. Uh, with the Sea Rambler, the Silver Lung, they call it, that that might be around seven or eight. Uh, and for the Shark Hunter, I think there are three in the world. Wow. I mean, is that just Mike, because what? they've been, uh, you know, they didn't last? Or, I mean, obviously they could have, but are the, were those the numbers that were produced for the original expeditions and teams? Um, anything, anything uh, that is the th sub three hundred non T case is a prototype, okay. and uh, was built in collaboration with Cousteau's team. So they were just really testing at the time, and that's that's probably why there aren't really a lot yeah, of surviving. They weren't examples. for production. They were, hey, it's okay if you break this because we're just testing. Okay, yeah. Hey, I've got a really cool Easter egg. Um, I ordered a bunch of books just uh, with everything going on. I wanted to make sure I was uh, had something to read if I needed it. And um, this book came today. It was a used copy of this book, Blue Meridian. That's about um, that's about shark diving. And uh, Kaz, can you get my my? Uh, we my, see you. Uh, yeah. I can okay. See you. Can well, I don't know if this is going to show up, but I there's see it. Stan Waterman. Um. Lift it up a little bit. Yep, sm smoking a uh, hobby yeah, pipe yeah. there or something. And he, look what he's got. He's got the orange docks. And I think this book came out in 1971. So that could be one of those, you know, authentic, um, you know, orange That's dial docks cool. right there. I mean, this is this is the watch that I try to take everywhere. So this watch has been to Hong Kong. It's been to Colombia. It's been to the Caribbean with me. Um, you know, up here in Seattle, Miami. It's it's. I'm really trying to make it my travel watch and get as many passport stamps as I can with it. Um, yeah, I love it. And I think I think if you kind of find yourself in a room with a bunch of watch people. It's pretty unlikely that you might find a Doxa, especially especially one yeah. of these. And that's that's just kind of that's one almost slightly arrogant side of watch collecting that I enjoy, but it's kind of fun. You can't deny it. Mike, were you are, are you the one who said uh, I think when these first started coming out, when they started reissuing the three hundreds, that they were you you anticipated exactly what happened, which was that they had, and I think half jokingly that they had just made a ton of the cases and we're just going to roll them out with dial after dial. Yeah, so um, if you... Uh, there's a book by a physician who is also a Doxa fan. I forget his name. I wrote about him on the site, but uh, if you look at every kind of significant Doxa release, they release things in batches of 300 so 300 300 300 so it only kind of made sense that once they came out with this one um that they were going to do it again uh yeah. so with with the non co-branded versions they did release 300 of the orange the white and the black with the co-branded versions we got 300 of the orange 300 of the white and i think with the black one we got 200 um which was kind of like the only hiccup there. So it was it was a little predictable. And the cool thing about this one is that it is one of the last models from the Rick Murray era. He is an entrepreneur and watch collector that essentially revived uh, the sub-series for Doxa. 
So it's kind of cool to have one of the last watches before his departure from the brand. However, I would love to test the new models. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with them. They look pretty good. So yeah, this is this is kind of my pick for the ultimate dive watch. I think it's, and yeah, I, again, I would love, I don't have a sub, but uh, anymore, but it would be cool <laughs> to just have this and another sub. I think, I think it'd be a pretty solid, solid collection. To watch collection? Yeah, man. <laughs> well, here, let's do this. I will do a quick recap of everyone's choices. Thank you so much for everyone that's been sticking into the show and listening all this way. And thank you so much, everyone, all the TV distributors that have joined me on the show. We've lost some of you. Some of you have left and then come back. You've returned to the fold. Uh, I think this has been way longer than we expected, which I apologize for. Uh, but just do a really, really quick recap. Uh, I chose the... What else are we going to do, Kaz? Do about what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, we have shelter in place, I guess man. that's, I guess that's in true. Place. I guess that's true. But here, I will do a quick recap of choices that we have. So I went first. I chose the G-Shock fucking GWFD100B-1. It's a uh, Casio G-Shock. It's a Frogman. It's got Deathmaker. Deathmaker. Death Deathmaker. Mm, that's a good band name. It's got a Death Death Meter. You can record dives, log dives, a whole lot of really cool digital features. In the post discussion, maybe a, a digital watch isn't the best choice to dive in, but I still thought for functionality and cool features, it made sense. Um, second choice we have here was Jason, chose the Seiko SKX, obviously iconic. Not just the the really iconic dive watch, a really recommended first watch for a lot of people for a really, really good motherfucking reason. Um, third choice was Greg with the Rolex soap. I mean, definitely two iconic pieces back, you know, head to head. Super, super cool with the Rolex. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, really, really cool choice with the Rolex sub. Obviously, it's iconic for a reason, and I love Greg's justification in that. It was so good, they made their own homage with the with Tudor. I thought that was super funny. Um, number four, Henry coming in with the Emperor Tuna SBD X014. Certainly an occasion like uh, like you want to make your diving a really, really special occasion. Uh, I, I would call it definitely like a dong watch, like a dong hanging dive watch. This is a big ceramic rose gold thing. I mean, that's true. If, if Xerxes 300 dove, he would probably wear that. <laughs> you know what I mean? If anyone else saw the movie other than me, I'm not too sure. Uh, let me see here. Number five, Damon, who we might have lost, if that's the case. That's all good. I know no, it's probably the next time. Oh, good. What up, man? I couldn't he see your right face. He's right there, Kaz. He's here. You're fucking blind, Kaz. God. Storm, storm the gates. So much for Damon. command presence. Damon, yeah. <laughs> Damon came in uh, with the super cool Zen Easy M1. Um, that thing is just... I mean, yeah, I, I, I like it just because it's over-engineered, which honestly seems to be uh, a pretty common thing you see with just not just a lot of German watches, but just a lot of German uh, manufacturing and, and kind of engineering in general, you know. So uh, definitely really, really cool to see that on the list. I'd love to see that in person one day. Um, let me see here. Baird coming in with the... Uh, just to, before I explain this, you can send your hate mail to tbws.contact.gmail.com. <laughs> uh, Baird coming in with his ultimate dog watch choice of the Tudor P01, precisely because of its novelty factor in that it harkens back to something, a design language that made sense to him, where something's out of work, let's just make it work, who care, kind of not really worry about what it looks like. I love also the image of Baird wearing it in his mom's kiddie pool. I mean, really putting this thing to the test, you know? That's right. Number <laughs> seven, Mike Razak coming in with the Seiko SUND065. I've seen that thing a bunch on Instagram. I've seen it all over the internet. I had never actually known what it was, so thank you, Mike, for actually telling me what the reference number of that thing was. Super, super cool. Aesthetically, very, very pleasing. But then when you get past that, a lot of really cool functionality in there as well. Really, really, really cool stuff. And then Mike, my better half of watch Watch Mike Panate, bringing us home. Uh, with the, I didn't, I, I didn't expect you to pick the docs. I thought you were gonna like, I thought you were gonna pick something uh, like, like, like the Bremont Super Marine. Is that a Bremont watch? Fuck, is Super Marine a Bremont watch? Sure. Michael? Yes, yeah, it is. Fuck it. it should be. Thank you, <laughs> Michael. Coming in with the Doxa Sub Three Hundred. What did I write? Sub Three Hundred. It. it ends oh, there. I wrote, no, I wrote no T. Is there a Sub Three Hundred T? Yeah, there is. So the no T. Yeah, that's even more specific. There you go. Michael coming in with the Doxa Sub 300, no T. Um, super, super cool picks. All this information that we've been talking about will be in the description below with the YouTube channel. Let every, let us know your thoughts on all of our picks. Again, huge thank you to you guys for joining me here. Um, 
and just kind of dedicating time tonight. I know there's not much else going on, but her, you know what I mean? You know, we all, it's probably dinner time for a lot of us or bedtime for me, I'm an old man now. Um, and I would also like to commend all of us on our uh, uh, quarantine beards. Obviously, Baird has been in quarantine longer than any of us have. <laughs> so, mad kudos. Great, man. <laughs> uh, any closing remarks from anyone before we shut this thing down, or is everybody good to go? Is that, is that sad time? Okay, Michael is Michael's trying to mime something. It looks important. It puts the sausage... In her mouth. I don't know if it's, that's a peach. It's the lotion it's on anyone. the skin. It puts the lotion <laughs> on its skin. Um, I think it's that time, Michael. It's that sad, sad time. Do you, do you concur? Shall we end? Let's do it. Let's do it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for TBWS uh, Writer's Room episode number two. Everyone wave goodbye. Leave comments below in the show notes and everything like that. Peace. <laughs>